What's up, Doombots? Tony Scongili here with his first video of 2020, and it's an appropriate one. It's my predictions for the year. Now, I'm going to go out and say right now, not anything here is guaranteed. I'm not pretending to have some kind of inside information that I don't. Uh, this is just based on conversations I've had with people and common sense, what I expect. You'll even notice in the quarter one prediction, um, some things are already known. These were from last year. You saw it on my stream. I was talking about it then. I figured I'd still include it in the video as like a reference point. So we're going to start by quarter. Now, Fox Next doesn't do things by quarter. Fox Next does things by patch, which is why some patches take like three months to come out. Some patches are like one month long. Some patches are a little bit over. Patches are weird. I'm just kind of putting things down to quarters because... I work in corporate America, everything is done by fiscal quarter and fiscal year. So quarter one, right, the quarter we're in right now, sometime between January and March, we're going to be expecting a couple of things. The first, in humans, duh, we have them right now, no conversation. The second, and if this video gets out before the patch, it might be a little spoiler, is the new trait and new characters, that would be the new mutants. Uh, of them, I don't know which ones. Are coming out i would assume wolfsbane off the top as it's a popular character that people know uh that said magic daniel moonstar and sun fire sunspot sun something are likely to also be included not sure uh the iso 8 campaign which was originally slated for quarter four of last year they're trying to get it out as fast as possible because fox next doesn't know how to make money so they figure we'll release the next stage of red stars that'll make money so we're going to try to get that out as quickly as possible Hopefully, we'll see it in February, with any luck. Uh, the eventual release of Dark Dimension 3 is also slated for the first quarter of this year at some point. Which patch? I don't know. But we are expected to see them. I believe that Dark Dimension 3 has also been pushed back because of the ISO 8s. I think it was kind of a one-and-done thing. As you can see now with U7, ISO 8s were clearly going to help U7, so... They probably are like, well, it's not really Stark Dimension 3 as another game mode without ISO 8s, but either way, it's very likely that it'll come out within the first month or two of this year. And finally, the API release, which was slated to be released in the fine in the 4.0 patch. I'm not sure if that 4.0 patch is going to show up towards the end, like towards March, or it'll be the second patch of the year. But that's where I imagine we're going to end up at the end of quarter one. Um, quarter two, April through June, April, May, June. Red Star rework. Not what you think, not a positive thing, just more of a we've make we've made all of the money we should be able to make out of Red Stars now that ISO 8s are out. So let's pretend like it's a good idea and that we've been on your side the whole time and make them easily accessible. People are going to be spending so much time and effort trying to find the optimal and money, trying to find the optimal ISO 8s that... Red Stars are kind of going to go by the wayside, so I imagine this rework to be more of an availability rework, either in availability or of actual orbs. They might finally add left and right pillars to the Red Star orbs. I don't know. Um, ultimately, they could just give us more promotion credits and say, like, here, look, you get more promotion credits from stuff. Uh, that kind of thing. Taskmaster, uh, to be the character released with the uh, Black Widow movie. There may be more, like they might Red Guardian or like Yelena Belova Black Widow in, and then we'll finally get a farmable Black Widow, but probably not. I believe the Taskmaster uh, will come with a mercenary rework, the mercenary characters, and a lot of times people are like, what about Hand? What about Hydra? What about that? Well, Hydra is due for a rework this year, clearly, um, but Taskmaster and the mercenaries the mercenaries are one of those character lists that people don't invest in. And before anyone who thinks they're smart says, well, you need mercenaries for, you know, the gold event. Like, yes, but the mercenaries you use for the gold event are very infrequently MRG, Merc Lieutenant, Merc um, a Sniper, and Merc Soldier. You might use one of, like, Merc Lieutenant, Merc Riot Guard, but realistically using the good Mercs, you know, like Korath, Daredevil, Killmonger, and then the other two are just kind of holding their spot. You're trying to max investment. They they stand to make the most money, like they did with AIM, like they did with Kree, 
they stand to make the most money by taking a team that many people aren't excited about and making them usable. No one cared about AIM, and then all of a sudden people were buying AIM and buying tech gear and skill gear to invest in AIM. I imagine that would be the same with mercenary and skill characters. Uh, I believe all the mercenaries are skill-based, except Merc Lieutenant, I think he's tech. So you have the ability, they have the ability in their side to be like, well, this will make money because no one cares about the Mercs, etc., etc. It would be kind of the same for Ravagers, except their rework doesn't have anything that makes sense with what they're doing. So at least Taskmaster coming out and reworking the mercenaries kind of makes sense within the flow of the story. Uh, new Raid. Now, I don't know if it's going to be like a Delta Raid to add after the Gamma, or if it's going to be uh, the return to a single character raid, but uh, to my knowledge, there is multiple new raids or like being fine-tuned, and adding a new raid to the cycle is something they've been wanting to do for a while. I also know that they're interested in bringing back the character release through raid mechanism uh, i don't know what that's going to look like if it's going to be some abomination of uh, what they're doing now which is garbage orbs that just have a good character in them or if they're going to go back to the orbs that you get give you one thing uh, that's how i expect a character like red skull to be reworked or even cyclops eventually in a new raid but i don't have any information on that i would tell you if i did uh, again also in quarter two I expect a big milestone character. It's kind of in line with what they like to do around their one year. And, and uh, it, it just feels like where they want to go. So it'll be another Coulson style character. Uh, Coulson, Captain Marvel, like really good character, but going to be like at least a hundred shard unlock, kind of a pain in the dick. No problem. Uh, Nick Fury's retirement party. That's uh, another thing I anticipate happening relatively early this year. Uh, Nick Fury will be treated like Iron Man. I don't think that Nick Fury is generating as much money for them as he used to, and I don't think that the advent of Coulson has made the Fury Shield team better. They're still an adequate team, but right now, because Coulson exists, Fury Shield is a defense team in war for the most part, and they're not really pulling their weight in other game modes it's also not worth it to invest in fury shield anymore when the guardians of the galaxy are pretty much great at every game stage in almost every game mode you don't need fury shield at six star to walk through enter the darkness anymore or dd1 you're not using them for dark dimension 2 you're definitely not using them for dark dimension 3 they're kind of relegated to an okay war offense team and a really good war defense team based around one character. Nick Fury is not going to be generating uh, as much for them. Plus the Kree minions, they're okay. I imagine Nick Fury to be receiving the retirement cycle. And if you're asking why are they going to retire Nick Fury, why are they even thinking about it? They, there's a cadence to how they want to release legendaries. They want there to be a nice little flow and kind of think about what it means to release a legendary. They don't want a legendary to come out every month. That's too frequently at some point. It doesn't feel like a legendary anymore. They don't want it to come out once every five months because then people are just going to miss it and be really upset. Instead of buying to make sure they don't miss it, they're just going to say, I don't care. They want a nice little flow of cadence of about 80 to 90 days between legendary uh, passes. So in order to do that, it's better to take some characters that are no longer high impact and remove them or put them on a retirement legendary status like Iron Man than to, do it, than to just pretend like, oh no, 46 legendaries is a totally viable amount or else you start end up having overlap legendaries and that's not something I don't think anyone's interested in. The last is War Room upgrades. There's an upgrade button at the top of War Room. We're getting it. I'm supposed to come out, um, to my knowledge, a little bit earlier last year. The last two quarters of last year kind of were kind of up in the air. That's why we didn't see Cyclops. There was a lot of stuff that they were moving on, trying to sell the company, obviously. Uh, they were just really focusing on making their numbers look good. And, you know, all they need is a couple of big uh, bumps in sales to be able to say, hey, look at the spreadsheet with no numbers. We can sell stuff for you. So we're looking at getting the War Room upgrades. That probably is going to be a little bit earlier in quarter two than I anticipated. Probably going to come around sometime with like the API release. It might even be at the same time, but to, it might be in the game and then not released until a later date. I'm, I'm assuming somewhere around April, May is where we're going to get the ability to actually upgrade the War Rooms. What that's going to look like, to my knowledge, it's going to be a place where we can dump all of the extra 
ability materials and green uh, uh, items that we weren't using. You know, uh, the you know the green ability materials and the green level up items, or I'm sorry, training gear, they kind of stockpile after a while. There's not enough new characters that come out, especially for the end game players. And that's where the war room upgrades are going to matter. They're going to be end game upgrades where you're going to be dumping some amount of resources that you've accrued uh, into this and the room will get some kind of boost. Like for example, armory might go from a 30, uh, you know, 30% offensive boost to a 31% offensive boost or a room might get automatically boosted, something weird like that. That's where I'm, I'm putting kind of everything into as far as what uh, war room upgrades are going to, to be. Uh, we move to quarter three and I'll just slide this over. Uh, as obviously you notice, as we go down, there's less information because Foxnext doesn't necessarily have a roadmap. They have like a, we should do this kind of information as I've heard. So my knowledge for quarter three is, is pretty simple. So July, August, September, we're going to see the Eternals versus the Black Order. Uh, it's pretty easy to determine that the Eternals are going to come up, but they're going to try to sell in the same way they're selling in humans versus Asgard, which if you didn't know, and humans beat Asgard. Actually, two of them beat Asgard. Everyone else is just great. Um, so they're going to do that kind of same thing. They like the feel of what that was, where they release one team, and then they release the counter to that team. They're going to keep that going. So we're going to have Eternals versus the Black Order. Uh, potentially a new game mode. I don't know if that's like a world boss where it's a giant raid where everyone on the server or in the entire game, depending on how they do it, fights uh, one character similar to how Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes does raids and plenty of other games actually have world boss style content where everyone goes in, does an amount of damage. And, you know, at the end, if you succeed, everyone gets a lot of rewards and that's based on ranking. And if you fail, everyone gets participation awards for jumping in or some kind of grand uh, arena style tournament. Uh, arena Grand Arena is known for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes it's kind of the last exciting thing that game has to do. Everything else is kind of lackluster from people who play. So I'd imagine they'd think, well, that's probably a great idea because that'll get whales spending again. And then, of course, the lesser whales are the people with lower roster powers who fancy that they could be competitive at a level that doesn't actually exist. They'll jump in and probably spend an arbitrary amount of money to succeed or work on specific characters. Uh, I imagine there will be the last and new Floodgate Legendary uh, Floodgate Legendary, Floodgate meaning a character that comes in and demands a specific response. Uh, Phoenix being the, uh, an example of a Floodgate Legendary. Previously, Magneto was kind of a Floodgate Legendary. Everything was based around that. I uh, imagine Quarter 3 is when they really like to release the, holy crap, this character is going to do work. So whatever the next Floodgate Legendary is, of the knowledge of it, I don't know. Could be anybody. Literally anybody. Uh, but That'll be around July, August, September. We'll get a, a, a peek at the next legendary that if we don't have uh, the entire meta, we'll shift it for one reason or another. Uh, and then Baron Zemo. Baron Zemo, uh, to my knowledge, is supposed to be set and ready to go in line with the Falcon and Winter Soldier uh, press docket. So um, that should be there. And then quarter four. I don't have any information, so I'm completely speculating nothing at all about this. Is It's going to be a standard end of your cash grab because they realize they haven't made any money because they're a terrible company. So they're going to do a whale-only legendary. They're going to have offers at 10% discount, but they'll advertise it at 90. And then, of course, they'll add Colossus to premium orbs finally. I should expect that by the end of the year, the ability to uh, slightly have more access to Colossus. There are things that I know are supposed to happen this year um, or speculate. I think is a better word to say, but I'm unsure of when the time frame is going to come up. Uh, the Red Skull and Hydra rework. I, in, I'm i more confident that Taskmaster and the uh, Mercenary rework is coming quickly, so I don't know if they're going to release Red Skull and a Hydra rework like early and then have two reworked characters very quickly. I, that doesn't make too much business sense, but it's Fox next. They might. Um, I would imagine that might happen a little bit later in the year or probably around Baron Zemo's release. Uh, Cyclops, he'll come out, right? He has to, right? February 31st, I'm sure. Uh, Silver Surfer, uh, a known entity. Uh, maybe if this video comes out, he might already be in the game. I don't know. Spoilers, technically, but Silver Surfer is a high likely character to see. 
uh, of course, a generic competition between whales that uh, no one will be rewarded by, not even the whales. That's something that's going to happen. They'll do, hey, which is the first whale alliance to spend $10,000 or something? Something They won't say that, but that's what it'll be. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm sure they'll give everyone some pity orb for the event having happened and build up hype on, uh, you know, between teams that no one actually cares about because hero worship is at its idol in a hero style collector game. So that'll happen. And then, of course, the hand rework, that's not going to happen. But people talk about it. So I'll just say it here. Hey, it might happen this year. It's probably not going to happen. Um, other than that, those are my predictions. Uh, if you think I missed something or if you think I'm completely wrong, feel free to comment. I won't read it because I don't care about your opinion. But, you know, comment in the bottom. Uh, and then someone else might see your opinion. But, you know, to do what you want. That's kind of where I think this year is going to go as a little bit of a chicken little sky is falling moment. Um, I'm personally giving this game about six months to course correct. I think that the last, you know, quarter of the year for 2019 was a very bad quarter for them. Maybe not necessarily financially. Uh, I don't think any of their quarters are phenomenal financially, but they, they, you know, they're still staying afloat. Uh, I don't, I think that with the release of yet another patch with four characters, I think they're kind of trying to figure out something. And I think it's about six months from now. So June, July, some point uh, they have to kind of release stuff. I'm there are things I'm afraid of. I'm afraid of the ISO eight release, not because the ISO eights are going to be broken, but because the release mechanism or how to get them will be close enough to black, the red stars that it's not worth it. Uh, I'm afraid that, you know, they're going to keep pushing the negative aspects of the game, the things that the majority of the community aren't okay about. Uh, and they're going to assume that, well, what worked in the past will continue to work, which, you know, is a great assumption if you don't, you know, if you live in a bubble and don't interact with anyone outside. But I think that as a community, we know that pe people are leaving, people are quitting. I know it's harder to find uh, replacements if someone quits our alliance i know there's a lot of alliances joining up um and i'm a little worried but it's it's not our responsibility to save the game it's fox next responsibility to make a game worth saving and while i do love this game and enjoy it i i feel like there's a countdown clock uh as to whether or not the entire community will accept it or not and i'm saying they have six months to course correct this ship because they're sitting on the Titanic saying no iceberg can take this down, possibly. And I see a giant iceberg coming around in ISO 8s, and I'm afraid. Uh, but I do love this game. I don't want it to go away. I don't think anyone wants it to go away. I just think, as a community, we have to stop letting Fox Next get away with it. And whatever that means, we could talk. You can talk to me about it on stream if you think so. So thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it greatly. I have some other videos somewhere around here that will pop up. But I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Skinjui, and I'll catch you later.